Ladies, lords, and ladies, Kaiser here, and welcome to a brand new series of Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. You guys wanted it, you guys are getting it, you guys selected this game during uh, the uh, entire polling series on the community, uh, community uh, page. I believe that uh, in the final round, or in the second round, uh, Bannerlord collected about 60% of all of the votes. Um, so th with that being the case, it did not seem like uh, it was necessary for me to make the quote-unquote final poll between the um, first place and the runner-up just to see if indeed this game would be the one you wanted. Because yeah, you made it pretty apparent. <laughs> so... Uh, fair warning, really quickly, uh, most of my Mountain Blade gameplay, or rather practice, has of course been on Mountain Blade Warband, uh, as that was the basis for all of the, essentially all of the series that I've done on the channel. The last time I recorded a Battleload series was when the game barely came out in early access, <laughs> at this point quite a while ago. Uh, and I haven't had much practice with the game since, what with most of my time being put into the Warband series. Um, so yeah, if you see me whiffing <laughs> certain attacks or anything like that, um, please don't judge too, too harshly. Now, I have also uh, been told that there have now been uh, voice lines added as well, so we will simply be doing a new campaign and just going through the whole thing. Uh, the poll did state that this was going to be a vanilla uh, run, so we are definitely going to do that first, and um, by the time the series ends, I'm sure you guys are going to be suggesting plenty of interesting mods uh, in the comment section, which I will uh, definitely consider for uh, any future series. Now that with all of that said, hopefully you guys enjoy, and let's head into the new campaign. For 500 years, the Calradian Empire dominated the continent. Its armies scattered foes before them. The strongholds of proud tribes crumbled beneath its engines of war. From the forests of the north, to the wastes of the south. All was brought beneath the standard of their legions. Brutal as the conquest was, the wise agreed that it brought peace. The land, now untroubled by armies, grew rich. But empires, like men, grow old. Leaders lose a common cause. Corruption spreads. Old enemies learn the Empire's tricks and devise new ones of their own. Until one day, the bonds holding the Empire snap. Then comes the Civil War. Fitting all against all. A time of hatred. A time of suffering. But also, even in the worst hours, a time of courage and defiance. As new leaders arise, from new places and new peoples, to turn back the tides of destruction and bring forth a new world from the ashes of the old. That was most definitely also not part of the game when it first came out. 
Right, so, choose your character's culture. Um, I have a general idea of what I would like us to do. Uh, Vlandians, just to go through all of them, so Vlandians pro provide 5% more renown from battles, 15% uh, more income while serving as a mercenary. Now, I do intend on going through, shall we say, a mercenary phase. Um, I'm not completely sure yet which uh, kingdom will be joining for that one. It's most likely going to depend on which kingdom has uh, enemies that... Um, we find we can defeat. 10% uh, production bonus to villages that are bound to castles, uh, and recruiting, but recruiting, recruiting, sorry, lords to armies costs 20% more influence, and that's that. Uh, that's definitely a pretty big debuff. Uh, recruiting and upgrading infantry troops are 25% cheaper. Are a cheaper armies lose 20% less daily cohesion. That's the Sturgeons, but the debuff being 20% more relationship penalty from kingdom decisions. Yet again, um, oh, relationship penalty from Kingdom Decisions, so not uh, influence. Okay, the Empire 20% less garrison troop wage, being an army brings 20% more influence. Village hearths increase 20% less. The Asurai caravans are 30% cheaper to build, 10% less trait penalty, no speed penalty on desert, and daily wages of troops in the party are increased by 5%. Now that can be negated by a couple of perks, um, and the caravans costing 30% less is definitely, definitely a pretty good uh, buff there. The Asurai would probably be my second choice. <laughs> uh, Kuzaits, recruiting and upgrading mounted troops are 10% cheaper. Of course, they're basically like the Mongol tribe um, in this game. 25% production bonus to horse, mule, cow, and sheep in villages owned by Kuzait rulers, but 20% less tax income from towns. Because I'm guessing that's also because, as historically, the Mongolians basically allowed governors to do uh, pretty much uh, anything they wanted in their own towns as long as they paid some tributes. Um, Batanians, 50% less speed penalty and 15% sight range bonus in forests. Towns owned by Batanian rulers have plus one militia production and 10% slower build rate for town projects in settlements. Um, now, I know I said this, uh, the Asurais were my second choice, but right now I'm still deciding, honestly, the Batanians or the Asurai. I love the Batanian uh, speed penalty uh, in forests being much, much lower. That would enable us not o uh, both to escape as well as catch any um, enemies we wish to pursue. The build rate is a bit of a letdown, uh, but the daily wages of troops in the party are increased by 5%. So, like I said, that can be uh, negated via perks. While slower build rate, that would basically require you to be uh, a governor to um, negate those, which of course we won't be, but I suppose our governors, aka our companions and whatnot that we might put into those uh, settlements uh, might get some sort of uh, negation for that. Um... Cheaper caravans. I mean, I, I, I still think we're going with the Batanians, honestly. The uh, le speed penalty, uh, the 50% less speed penalty is simply, to me, personally, just too good. Uh, we I don't necessarily care exactly what we look like. Soldiers! Attack! And the lettuce! Yeah! Move forth! We'll go with this uh, voice here. We'll go, we'll be a big boy, big height, weight slightly down, but let's be... Uh, Magnificent Goliath, shall we? Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see, skin type really quickly. Uh, like that, face white with that's fine, face death, face, uh, face, 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 don't really like cheekbones with a little bit down, cheekbone death, face sharpness. No, let's be a little bit plump, just a little bit dull. Uh, eye socket size, ear shape. Eh. Not completely back. Ear size, maybe a little bit bigger. Face asymmetry. Not in the middle is just fine. Eyebrow type, let's have some bushies. There we go. <laughs> uh, brow, otter height, you know what? We'll have a slightly meaner look about ourselves. Like that. Eye position will go... That's fine. Eye size, that's fine. Monolids, none. Uh, eyelid height? Oh. Yeah, this is fine. 
Uh, eye shape, I eye, eye color. Let's match it with the Batanians. Let's go green. Uh, nose. The nose angle is fine. Length, slightly less. Bridge, may have a little bit. Tip height. Nah, let's not have it pointing down too, too bad. Nose size, maybe a little bit smaller than that. Nose width, a little bit smaller as well. Nostril height. Nyeh. <laughs> let's find nostril size. It's a normal size nose, I would say. Uh, nose shape. Oh, I see. Do we basically just want to have a... You know what? That seems fine. Uh, teeth. Eh, it's not like we're going to be talking much. Uh, mouth width. Mouth position. Frown. Let's be a frowny. Nobody's going to be able to turn this frown upside down. Unless we defeat everybody. Conquer the world. Lip thickness. Uh, that's fine. Mouth forward. That's okay. Jawline. Let's go a little bit out. That's a little bit too close. Chin forward. No, that's fine. Chin shape. We have a chat chin. <laughs> Let's have a normal one, shall we? We already kind of have a butt chin right there. Chin length. There. I, I think that's good. Hair. Um... What are Batanians? Batanians are basically what? The Celts. So either, I suppose, blonde or ginger. Or something in between. Kind of like that. Not completely ginger, but like, sort of. Let's go with that. Um, yeah, like, I have... Uh, my settings are on max on everything, but I swear to god, the hair still looks so bad. Nah, we won't exactly go full gel chad. Uh, is this, this has a ponytail, actually. Uh, surely the ponytail is not going to clip out of anything, right? I'm pretty sure that once you put a cap on, the hair just kind of disappears. So I guess since it doesn't really matter... Uh, you know what? This seems like the most normal of normal. Let's just go with that. That's fine. And let's see, do we want any markings? This shouldn't go too Maori, I think. Let's see, can we just have... Actually, do we... Oh, we can have a beard, right? Magnificent, magnificent stash. Bit of a goatee. Bit of a stubble, but with <laughs> massive sideburns. Oh, just a stubble. That's unfortunately not available, it seems. Oh, there is, there is. Alright, you know what? We'll go with that. No, it honestly looks like it's just sprayed on top of us. Um, <laughs> onto our face, <laughs> honestly. Uh, I, I think we just go with this slight goatee over here. The scar can still be seen. Which is cool. Either... Uh, I like either that one or this. Because that would indicate that basically even if we had like a, um, you know, helm on, that sure, something could pierce through at least at the ends right there. You know what? Sure. I think this is our character. This is what we'll go for. Alright, as for the um, attribute and skill allocations. Um, honestly, the Warband... <laughs> Uh, the latest Warband series that I'm doing, so the Viking Conquest, actually raised my appreciation of throwing weapons quite a bit. So Javelins, I do like them quite a bit. Uh, I do think that we're going to have to increase our endurance uh, slightly, not just for the athletics, but for the uh, horse riding. Because um, we are going to be a cavalryman after all. Um, and also smithing, nothing to, um, to ignore there. Um, now, I will say at this point, I will not go full, like, complete full uh, min-max into smithing from the beginning. Uh, you know, I've seen um, guides online showing how you can essentially just become a millionaire within uh, an in-game year um, by doing smithing. 
Um, <clears throat> we won't exactly be doing that, but I will definitely be taking a, po a couple of points in that. Um, just to have like a fallback when we do need a little bit of money and whatnot. Um, because smithing, I think smithing is actually one of the best, if not the best way of making money, at least early and mid-game. Uh, in comparison to um, perhaps trade, which is also a very nice way of making money. Uh, but I personally just prefer smithing. <clears throat> uh, uh, cunning, probably not going to go too much into it. But social, we're definitely going to go a, a few points into that so that we can get charm. Because one of the, uh, I believe it's the 275 charm uh, level that actually gives you the plus one influence uh, every single day. Which, you know, influence, especially late game. Uh, when it comes to kingdom management and whatnot, is going to be uh, invaluable. Absolutely invaluable. Uh, leadership, also a good thing to have. And we'll also, of course, just in general, it's a good idea to always go some steward and some medicine uh, into intelligence. So our focus is going to be endurance, social, and intelligence. I think we're actually just going to start off with endurance. What also makes endurance really good is that eventually along the way, you do get to increase one of your either vigor or control. Uh, you do get to, point, uh, to put an additional attribute point into one of those uh, by going endurance. So that is also very, very nice. Um, so let's find whichever uh, increases our endurance there we go okay so <laughs> straight up um, you were born into a family of smiths 10 percent skill levels and one focus point to smithing and two-handed one attribute point to endurance uh, okay so as a child you were noted for uh, let's see the endurance, your skill with horses, excellent, and that also gives us a point in writing. Uh, of course, it depends on the culture, because not every single culture is going to give you the exact same choices here, so your uh, starting build is going to be slightly different uh, depending on the culture you go. So here we do go your skill with horses. Uh, like all village children, you helped out in the fields. You also, let's see, is there gathered herbs in the wild, which does increase our scouting. Um, it gives us endurance, and it actually gives us a point into medicine as well. That's not bad at all. Uh, we could also go sell products um, at the market, which does increase our trade charm and goes up. Uh, gives us a social point there. Um... So it's either sold product at the market or gathered herbs in the wild. Mm, I still think we're going to go with the herbs in the wild. Gives us endurance, cunning, intelligence. This one gives us... No, not this one. Yeah, this one. What am I talking about? Um, this give us the starting level of, or rather, the first 10 points into charm. So, though, we will focus on endurance at first. As a youngster growing up in Colorado, war was never too far. You, trained with a hearth guard, that gives us endurance and riding as well. Both things very welcome in the beginning. No choices here actually gives us any um, point into social, which is fine. So we'll just, once again, go endurance here. Uh, you defeated an enemy in... Uh, before you set out for a life of adventure, your biggest achievement was that you defeated an enemy in battle. Uh, you saved your village from a flood. Uh, you invested some money in land. You hunted a dangerous animal. Unfortunately, that gives points into crossbow, not bow. I kind of prefer bow, but then again, like I said, we will be going into throwing. Um, you had a famous escapade in town, which gives us a little bit of roguery. It also gives us the first 10 points into athletics and an additional point in endurance. Um, but I think in this one, we actually will go. You treated people well for the one point in social, one point in charm, oh, sorry, uh, one, yeah, focus point in charm, and one focus point in steward as well. So we can start off with that. Uh, like many families in Claradia, your life was upended by war. Your home was ravaged by the passage of army after army. Eventually, you sold your property and set off your, uh, with your father, mother, brother, and your two younger siblings to a new town you'd heard was safer. But you did not make it. Along the way, the inn at which you were staying was attacked by raiders. Your parents were slain and your two youngest siblings seized. But you and your brother survived because... Alright, let's see. 
we get to do a little bit of vigor. We get uh, the bow um, aptitude that I was talking about earlier. We can get one more point into endurance, and I think honestly, um, level eight endurance is gonna be uh, like the max that we're gonna go. Uh, you trick the raiders that gives roguery some tactics and a little bit of cunning you organize the travelers to break out that gives us an additional focus point into charm uh and also leadership with four social but you know i do think we'll just go with this writing is gonna be very very important uh or rather it will be the quickest way of getting <laughs> levels at first as well uh enter your name what would our name be here um, hmm, let me see, randomize, Griff, Idwin, Durngill, Rylan, Cadogan, isn't that literally a character, Ergeon, Mitch, <laughs> Sinek, Cadogan, Aided, Egan, Breeden, Cadogan, wait, are they just, hmm, how about, I do like the actor Killian Murphy. <laughs> Let's just go with killing it. Wait, is it spelt with two L's or one L? Uh, just a moment. It is indeed two L's. There we go. All right, so <laughs> we'll go with killing it. Because why not? Why not? I'm not sure why I deleted the one L and edit, edit it afterwards. Uh, you prepare to set off with your brother on a mission of vengeance and rescue. Here is your character. Continue if you're ready, or go back to make change. Okay, so we are ready. We go to next. We will go into... Uh, let me see. I, I think Bannerlord requires Iron Man mode. Is that it? No, it doesn't. Uh, okay, enable battle deaths for all heroes. Clan members' death possibility is realistic. Uh, combat AI difficulty. Good god, I, I probably will not be used to it here just yet, so let's just go to normal at first. Uh, everything else is realistic, so we will be taking damage on everything. Um... I'm sure that with the, uh, I'm sure you guys are going to want some more series with this game anyway, so in those we will be increasing the combat AI. I don't think this is actually, this can actually be changed during the game, but if it can be, um, we'll be probably increasing it a little bit uh, it, later in as well. We will not be going Iron Man mode, um, because, you know, if the game crashes, I don't want to lose... Um, uh, lose uh, too much recording, um, too much of the recording, so I will be saving everyone uh, every now and again. Auto allocate clan member perks, not we'll be doing that as well. Uh, right, let us start the game, brother. It's been three days now we've been tracking those bastards. I think we're getting close. We need to think about what happens when we catch them. How are we going to rescue our brother and sister? Are we up for a fight? Oh, it's kind of nice how the names seem to always randomize. That's pretty cool. Though I've seen Yasin before. This looks like an old training field for the legions. Perhaps we can spare some time and brush up on our skills. The practice could come in handy when we catch up with the raiders. Um, so the thing is, we have no time to lose. We can do more if we split up. That basically just skips the initial tutorial. Uh, I will still be going through. We won't, will not be going through the actual... Um, what is this training place or anything like that? Uh, but I am curious if the story has changed. So let's we'll go on then. with this. Uh, we will exit though and just keep on going before we do anything else. We're low on food. There's a village north of here where we can buy provisions and find some help. Okay, uh, so we can move around like that, of course. And let's head to there. Uh, this is, of course, scripted, so we will be getting some pretty good units, if I remember correctly, from here. We take a walk around the... Village. Now we're here, I guess. So, we need food, and after that, maybe some men to come with us. The Ed man here can probably help us. Let's try to find him. Okay, so, alt to find everything of noteworthy, and we can see the headman right there. Headman Orthos. Sorry, I had to really quickly click W uh, A S D just to have that disappear. Bonk. I am Orthos, head man of this village. What brings you here? We need help. Some raiders have taken our younger brother and sister captive. We think they may have passed. They got way. your people too. Sorry to hear that. 
Those bastards have done a bit of killing and looting in these parts as well. We think they've gone north. I reckon there are a few folk around here who'll join you in going after them if you'll pay for their gear. Once you've made your preparations, come and talk to me again. I may have a task for you if you're going after the raiders. We indeed are. So let's get out and let's recruit troops. And yeah, these troops are not going to be available here. <laughs> the headman's troops, they're already, what is that, tier 4. Uh, but sure enough, we'll take all of them. And we'll buy some produce. So we'll just, I guess, buy all of that. Um, I believe none of this actually stays with us. Let's talk to the headman again. He had said he may have a task for us. We could use his friendship. Indeed. Alright, so... I don't know why he doesn't Glad allow to us see to talk what to you him, need. but let's visit. Now, about that matter I mentioned earlier. Yep. There's this wandering doctor who comes through it from time to time. Name of Tactius. Treats people for free. <laughs> We're fond of him. Well, we last saw him a few days ago. He was carrying some sort of chest, which he was very mysterious about. He was on some sort of quest, he said, though wouldn't tell us more. He set off on the road just a few hours before the raiders came through it. Well, he's not really a worldly type, just the kind of fellow who'd stumble into a trap and let himself be captured. We're worried about him. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. If we can keep an eye out for him, this Tactius, we'd be very grateful. Maybe if he's alive and well, he'll tell you a little more about his quest. Okay, so this is how we're introduced to the Neritus Folly uh, quest line, which allows us to get the, um, the Dragon Banner. Uh, any more troops? Nope. Okay, so with the eight troops, or rather with the six headmen troops, ourselves and our brother. Oh, and we already have the possibility of going with the first riding skill as well. Excellent. Uh, let's see. Uh, charge damage dealt or 10% maneuvering with plus 30 riding skill to troops in your formation. Or 10% charge damage dealt by troops in your formation. I... Uh, Pretty sure that a lot of our cavalry, at least at first, are going to be ranged, so we will go with the Nimble Steed. There we go. Uh, and also, we already have an uh, attribute point that we can go with, uh, which we... Sorry, focus point, not attribute. Um, let me see. Polearm, that's fine. Throwing. We will be putting a point into throwing. Um, pretty sure we... Wait, do we start off with any throwing weapons at first? Uh, that's not it. Inventory. No, we have a spear and we have an iron broadsword and that's it. Well, and a shield. Okay, so, let's beat up our first raider party. Now, just to show you, I do have everything set on very high, high and ult, uh, unlimited. Including the battle size. I have it up to 1,000. Hopefully, like, it says that it shouldn't be using too much of my GPU, but we'll see how it goes. We might have to uh, lower it if it gets too, too bad. Uh, but at least for now, it seems to be uh, okay. I did go through um, a little bit of a campaign uh, in the past week just to get a bit used to the controls again and whatnot. There they are, and we will just command our guys to attack. We will be taking out our spear. Let's see if we can see a couple raiders. I was too fast. Okay, never mind that thing when I so where I said I basically did a little bit of practice. There we go. Our spear also isn't doing that much damage. They have a lot of stun powers, which is annoying. Cavalry is they uh, make quite a big we'll say girth around the enemy formation in order to have a better charge. So we'd probably be better off just manually commanding them what to do. Yeah. Really, he was already bloody, but that was not enough to kill him. Okay, there's one of Radagos's raiders. Down. That's another one. But our horse is technically. But okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. Yeah! Okay, so we just uh, and we do, I believe, yeah, we rescue some headmass troops, so we will take those into our party as well. Um, and we're going to be collecting some prisoners. Uh, like I said, I'm pretty sure we don't get to keep any, any of this. 
But we might as well do the upgrades at least for the duration of the uh, storyline here. Okay, so we are currently um, slowed down because of Go! the... Um, what is it? Not disunity. Gosh darn it, I can't remember the word right now. <laughs> Forward! Unorganized, disorganized, disorganized from the previous battle, so it does give you a little debuff for a little while, which um, slows you down. Give them hell! Okay. Hopefully they weren't too close for an effective charge. It definitely would have been better to uh, charge them a bit further, but hey. I wanted to make sure that they're in the valley when we attack. That's a raider down. So two of them are focusing on me. Calvary is going to come back. There we go. That's another one. <laughs> kind of just struck him from the side there real quick. Yeah, and that's why I don't like rock throwers, because they do bring you out of your... Really? I didn't hit... Oh, there comes one of my cavalry. Oh, two of them. And they both missed. Four of you went across him, or rather through him, and all of you missed. There we go. Okay, that one hit. We won! Is that it? That was it. <laughs> okay, so I'm not the only one whiffing. That's good. <laughs> that is good. Um, let's see. That's actually better than what we have right now. We have no arm guards, so that's going to come in useful. Uh, I guess we could use a club. Why not? We're probably not going to use it, especially not on horseback, but hey. Uh, let's see. This is actually... Yeah, it has more points than what you have currently, so we'll give it to you. Yeah, that is it. We do look like raiders ourselves, but hey. Uh, there they are. How very nice of them to actually stay s at least close to where, they're s where they start off for the storyline to continue. Okay, so we do have autosaves also enabled. Uh, and I think this is the last group of raiders that we need to fight. Charge! Okay, this time I'm actually going to command them to immediately charge. They're going to get a nice boost unless they hit a tree. Hopefully, please don't all aim for the same person, which is probably exactly what happened there. Onwards! On me! Let's just do... Wanted to be doing circles around the enemy like they probably wanted to do. At them! And turn and charge. Oh, they're still just gonna keep going. Okay. They're adamant about taking a. What are they actually doing? Move out! Like they th don't get me wrong, they would eventually come back with a speed with plenty of speed to attack the enemy, but attack! that was a little bit weird. And that just keeps on going because he was still turned in that direction. I think there should be one. Oh, okay. Where, not, uh, where did he go? How far did he go? Look at that. <laughs> and that was only because he was facing that way when I ordered a charge. Okay, so we got two more looters as prisoners and two more headman's troops. Okay, we did take uh, a couple of rocks to the body there, so that's not too fun. Uh, do you have... Wait, those gloves are actually awesome. Give him. Give him to me. There we go. Much better. Okay, uh, notification. You rescued several prisoners that the raiders had been dragging along. They look parched and exhausted. You give them a bit of water and bread, and after a short while, one staggers to his feet and comes over to you. I don't know who you are, but I'm in your debt. These brigands would have marched us to our deaths. That is quite the ASMR voice, I won't lie. My name's Tactios. I'm a doctor by trade. I was on, well, a bit of a quest. But I'm now thinking I'm not really made for this kind of thing. 
I was with a caravan and they just came out of the brush. We were surrounded and outnumbered, so we gave up. I figured they'd keep us alive, if just for the ransom. But then they started flogging us along at top speed, without any water, and I was just about ready to drop. I could feel the signs of heat stroke creeping up, and I told them that they'd just flog me more. If your group hadn't come along, maybe I have a way to thank you properly. Do you? We're looking for two children captured by the raiders. Can you tell us anything? I'm afraid I haven't seen any children. But after our caravan was attacked, the chief of the raiders, the one they call Radagos, took and rode off with our more valuable belongings, including a chest that I had. He seemed to be controlling more than one band around this area. If this lot has your kin, then I think he'd be the one to know. I think you kind of skipped the word reading there. Okay. And since I have nothing of value left to repay your help, I'll tell you this. If you do catch up with and defeat that ruffian, you may be able to recover my chest. It contains a valuable ornament, which I was told could be of great value if you knew where to sell it. I was trying to find out more about it, but, as I say, I've had all my urge for travelling flogged out of me. Right now, I don't think I'd venture more than 20 paces from a well as long as I live. I mean, you seem to be in a good enough mood about it. <laughs> it doesn't look like much, and I suspect this lot will give it away for a few coins. But I got it from a mercenary whom I treated once, and he swore it was related to Neritz's folly. I don't know what that means, except that Neritz was, of course, the emperor who died in battle some years back. Maybe you could find out its true value. Thanks for saving me again. I hope our paths will cross again. Possibly, you seem like a good medical professional that would be good to have. Okay, so we will be attacking Radagos's hideout. I would have prefer if we had some um, missile units with us for this, but there's a lot to do. Let's actually speed up. Let's head into Radagos's hideout. And we can immediately attack in the middle of the day. Usually, when you attack a hideout, it will tell uh, tell you to wait uh, until nightfall. So we'll just tell everybody to follow us. We don't have... Yeah. Depending on your choices, of course, if you go any sort of missile proficiency and control uh, attribute, you would... ...have either a bow or some throwing axes here. But if it's just one after the other like this, you're fine. Even without sending our guys forward, this guy doesn't even have uh, any rocks to throw at us, which is nice. We can just hack him down. Is there one there? Is he sitting down? He is. Okay. Well, if I had anything to throw at him, I would. Oh, I could have maybe have picked up something Die, to throw at him bastards! from the first dude. Oh, that was really damage. Good god, this sword is actually strong. Wow. Um, you okay? And the sound effects of the body tumbling, though. And just kept going. Oh, he saw me from pretty far away. Alright, do you have anything to tell you? Don't. Good. Kind of dodged it at the last moment, and here we go. We've gained a level. Perfect. Uh, and based on the battle meter on top, I think there's two more. There's one of them just nonchalantly sitting over there. And the other one seems to be in the distance over there. I mean, they have a pretty good selection of uh, food over here, if I might say so myself. They even have some booze over there. Actually, no, I think there's two more. So where is the last one, then? I just want to be looking around. I don't want them... I don't want to just start getting poked by rocks from the fire. Oh, there he is. Uh, and yeah, I just have our guys following us, because I do want to be the one actually getting all of the points here. 
We're low on one-handed, we're low on athletics. Uh, pretty sure our brother is pretty high on them, and we're not gonna get to keep any of the headman's troops anyway. So might as well not share experience with them. Should appear. There we go. So, who's this that comes through my place of business, killing my employees? So yeah, whenever you attack a uh, hideout, you will eventually, once you clear the place out, be confronted by the hideout leader, uh, along with a couple of uh, lackeys. And you do get a choice of either dueling with him or attacking him with all of your units. Of course, right now we have zero armor. We don't really have uh, much to fight him with con considering his uh, equipment. So we will tell all of our guys to just attack. So, who's this that comes to that? Killing my employees. Okay, we heard you took our little brother and sister. Where Good are they? Good heaven. I'll need a better description than that. My men have harvested dozens of little brats in this region. Quite good hunting grounds. Already sent most of them off to a slave market, I know, though. To the south, so to the Asarai lands, actually. Since your hunt for your kin is fruitless, how about you clear off and save your own lives? Either that, or I'll force you to lick up all the blood you've spilled here with your tongues. Or you and I could settle this one-on-one. -on -one. So we won't be doing that. We don't do with slavers. We're gonna focus on us and uh, walk into our. The day is ours! I would say we already collected plenty of uh, experience from killing the enemy. Just dealing with uh, letting our guys deal with other guys. Yeah! Look at them run! <laughs> oh, 25 points them. into athletics and 14 points into a We whipped the <laughs> bastard! Uh, I don't think we get to keep any of the prisoners either. But we'll still take everything. Well, I recognize defeat when I see it. If I'm gonna be your captive, let me introduce myself. I'm Radagos. You haven't cut my throat yet. Which was a wise move. I'm sure I can find a way to be worth more to you alive than dead. You'd better help us get our brother and sister back. Or you'll swing from a tree. Ah, you'll need my help, all right. If you want to get them back. Alive, that is. See, my boys have some pretty specific instructions about what to do if there's a rescue attempt. Shall we get on the road? Remember... If I drop dead of exhaustion or drown in some river, that's it for your little dears. I don't expect a cozy palanquin now, but you best not make it too hard a trip for me. <laughs> a little bit full of himself, but the drown in some river, that's thats up to you. Let's not forget, what was his name? Barbosa? Was it Frederick Bar uh, Barbosa? The one that... Uh, Went on a crusade together with Lionheart and uh, just drowned while bathing in a river. I think that was him. Okay, you come across a chest with an old piece of bronze in it. It's so battered and corroded that it could have been anything from a cup to a crown. This must be the chest Tactius mentioned to you that has something to do with Neretzis' folly. Neretzis' folly. I don't know why I kept wanting to say Neretzis's. Always. I was hoping to find more treasure here, but I think business wasn't going too well for Radagos and his gang. I thought we were, the aim was just to find our <laughs> little brother and sister. <laughs> I, I found this strange looking metal nice. piece, though. It doesn't look too valuable, but it could be the artifact Acteos was talking about. Maybe we can sell it to one of the noble clans for a hefty price. Or, hear me out, we keep it. I have a better idea. We would have a better chance if we split up now. I'll take Radagos and go find the slaver market and look for a way to free the children. However, we must be careful not to endanger their lives, and it could be better to just buy them. We need to have our purses full for that, though. Yeah, I think it requires us to have 2,000 dollars. I'll need to take these men with us. Get... Radagos is a slippery one. I don't want him getting away. All of them? 
Yeah, see? And I'm pretty sure... Uh, for some reason, he decides to take all the prisoners, too, I think. So you want me to raise the money to ransom the loot? Indeed. You have to find a way to do that. Maybe this bronze thing can help. Perhaps. Takteo said it could be worth a fortune to the right person, if you manage not to get killed. If he's telling the truth, you must be careful. Never reveal that you have it, but try to understand its value and how it can be sold. Okay. One more thing. When you are talking to nobles and other people of importance, make sure you present yourself as someone from uh, a distant but distinguished family. You can use our family name if you like, or make up a new one. You will have a better chance of obtaining an audience with nobles, and it'll be easier for me to find you by asking around. Honestly, this, this sounds pretty badass. Killian Fendomus. You know what? Sure, we'll go for it. Get on the road now. Once I locate the little ones, I'll come find you. Oh, you know me. I am a fan of the... <laughs> both the Holy Roman as well as the Emperor, uh, Emperor of Man. Or rather, the Empire of Man. So we will be going with a... There we go. I think that's fine. Lighter? Darker? I think a little bit lighter. There. That should be good. Notification tutorial is over and now free to explore Kaldad. On the second day of summer 1084, you found the artifact which talked to this mission. There we go, you found the first banner piece. Alright, let's see our quest line right now. Establish, investigate Nettitus' folly and establish your clan. So, increase your denars by 1,000. By 1,000? No, we need 2,000 altogether. Uh, grow your party to 20 men. Current party size is definitely not 13. We're at 1. Uh, reach clan tier 1. So, this renown shouldn't be too, too hard to get. A uh, couple of uh, looter battles, a couple of uh, possible tournaments, and we should be there. And hire one companion. If I I'm hoping we get lucky enough and we manage to find one of the uh, companions that actually have some scouting. Uh, and, of course, investigate Neretzi's folly. As you explore Calradia, you can learn more about your artifact and its importance by asking any lord or lady about the Empire's recent history. Alright, yeah, as you can see, we have one unit, uh, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, we lost all of the prisoners. Um, we do have a point of athletics to use. Let's see. Uh, morning exercise, personal, plus three combat movement speed, or as captain, plus five combat movement movement speed to troops in your formation or we get well built and we get some more hit points we'll go with that one what is the captain one for this actually oh party leader plus five hit points to foot troops in your party yeah for sure for sure we're not gonna have too many foot troops i mean we're gonna have plenty of archers because i absolutely love um how strong archers are in this game uh, we do have two focus points that we can use. I mean, this is fine. Throwing should be fine for now. Writing, yeah, we're good. Uh, we did say charm. We're smithing. Smithing, we're still good because of the endurance, uh, because of how high our endurance is currently. Where is the, I think it's, uh, oops. There we go. We can either get a plus one to control or plus one to vigor. And we'll most likely be uh, go into vigor because we do want to be using some polearm action. Um, you know what? With that in mind, uh, smithing, lighting, throwing, charm. How are we on steward? Uh, let's put one point into steward here and one point into throwing. It's going to be good. Granted, we don't have any throwing weapons just just yet. Let's make our way to Lycaron over there. To get Opa. We don't want to get attacked just yet. We are alone. And even looters, as you saw, if they hit you with enough rocks, they will knock you out. And we don't really have anything to attack them from afar. Uh, fencing stolen goods in Lycaron. We will not be doing that one. Uh, go to keep. So somebody with the Neditus Folly storyline is in here. There she is. Um, unfortunately, we can't talk to her. What information? Food, speed, scene, range. Interesting. Uh, we will head into the tavern. And the Empire has one of the easiest uh, board games to make money on. So we will be playing on the hardest level. We will go for 500 uh, and we'll 
play as the defenders. It honestly is the easiest 500 vendor that you can get. Uh, it is a little bit cheesy. Um, well, unless he just attacks like that. Basically, all you have to do is just uh, wait for the enemy to do exactly that. Move some of his pieces into position for you to take. Uh, anybody not sure what the, uh, this game is? It's Tablet. So, Tablet is a game of attackers. So, the blacks versus the defenders, the whites. Uh, the attackers outnumber the defenders, but the defenders don't have to capture to win. Their main objective is to secure their king, so the center pawn. The king follows the same movement and capturing rules as the other pawns. Pawns can move to any tile in a vertical or horizontal direction, but they can never jump over other pawns. Pawns cannot move on or over the center tile. Once the king leaves this tile, he can also no longer cross it. Capturing is done by surrounding an opposing pawn from both sides with your own pawns. Pawns can also be captured by blocking them against the center tile. This works for both players. The defenders win when they can move their king to any edge of the board. The attackers win when they capture the king or if they can prevent all defenders from moving. Uh, I think it also used to be that if there's just one um, black pawn left that it automatically also ended the game. Uh, but I guess that's no longer a thing, or I am just misremembering it. But yeah, that's how you do it. Basically, you just wait for the enemy to put uh, his pawns in a, shall we say, precarious situation. You just surround him and take him down, and wait until one of the sides is essentially empty enough for you to quickly move your king. Otherwise, you just move back and forth, essentially just let the uh, attackers dig their own graves. Yeah, just like that. Eventually, of course, you can go on the offensive. For instance, let's say he can't really surround this pawn, so I'll move it forward. And just like that, I can basically remove that one. And there's just one more left on this side before we can just straight up move our king out of the way. Or rather, off of the board. And we'll do that by moving him here. Okay, he's not in danger of being taken yet, so we'll do that. Interesting choice. So this one would be in danger. Honestly, this one's in danger wherever we put him. But at this point, we're essentially gonna make it so that he's forced to either choose block the king. He didn't block the king, he did something very, very foolish on the other side of the board, so we just move our king and win. Is there... I didn't actually check... Uh, nope. There's no companion possible for us here. Let's see what we can possibly... Yes, civilian equipment. Okay, um... We'll keep everything here as is. Let's see, food, where we have two grain. Uh, we do have some money, thanks to that game just now. Mm. Apparently cheese is at a good price here. Oh, capacity exceeded, mm. right. We don't really have much of a capacity just yet, because we do only have ourselves. We're essentially the only ones carrying anything, uh, and our Sumter horse. Uh, we could get a Midlands Palfrey. Uh, it's not the cheapest one, I suppose. You know what? We'll just leave. It's fine. We're going to be fast, and we will go and collect some soldiers. Uh, we will not just be collecting any soldiers. We will be making our way down to the Aserai lands, because they have some of the best uh, early um, cavalry units. Pretty strong, and they also throw javelins. Wait, speaking of javelins, ho ho ho. Uh, I think I am gonna get rid of the broadsword. Just give me some javelins, please. We'll take two bags of simple javelins, like that, and we will also have a uh simple raider raider spear raider spear. Okay. Um, but we will keep the broadsword reason being we'll just enter the smithy here actually no we can't because we didn't buy any uh christ okay now i'm sorry that i actually continued the <laughs> tutorial 
but hey, once we get through these messages, it's fine. Um, do you have any hardwood, and is your hardwood cheap? We actually click here, should be... No, they do not. Okay. In that case, we will indeed just leave. We now have some throwing weapons. Perfect. Um, we can actually just head down to Vostrum, do the exact same thing, just play a game of the board game, so a game of tablet. We will be going up, 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 up. That's Ragea there with the Nerzis Folly storyline. Stop there. I would ask for your name. Okay, my name is Killian, madam. May I ask your name? I am Ragea, rightful empress of the Caladians. I am lady of Lycron and Onira. I have not heard of you, but you have the look of a man who might take make something of himself someday. <laughs> what is Nerzis Folly? Well, that, that's what some people call the Great Battle of Pandriac in the year 1077. Emperor Neretzes led an army accompanied by Crusades and Asrai to fight a coalition of Sturgians, Batanians, and Vlandians. It was a disaster for him. He died in it. But the victors didn't fare much better. Okay, so it was a Pyrrhic victory. Is there anything else? Okay, can you tell me anything about the battle? Of course. I did not witness the battle, but my husband, Arenikos, spoke frequently of it. Didn't I think Ragea used to be a uh, possible uh, target for, uh, uh, for uh, like, a romantic target? Basically, I think most women are in the game, unless they already have a partner. But I don't recall her already having a husband in the when the game at first came out. It was, like, notoriously hard to actually uh, romance her, though. <laughs> that I do remember, and all the memes around it. Okay. He was one of the Emperor's trusted commanders. He could not stop Nerezis from marching to defeat, but he managed to salvage something from the disaster. When the Sturgeons came over our barricades, he managed to lead a, troop, uh, a group of Nerezis guardsmen out the back. My husband's small force held together and, was, and were joined by stragglers and fugitives. He described the march back. No food, little water, marching day and night to keep ahead of the enemy's outriders. But they survived, the only organized Imperial force to do so. Uh, the city was in a state of panic after hearing rumors of what happened. Arenikos kept things from the sending into chaos. When it came time for the Senate to choose the next emperor, there was no question that it should be him. I loved him before as a man, but that they learned to love him as something more. What a gift he was to the people of Calradia. Okay, so he is basically the leader of... Uh uh, which Southern Empire? Southern Empire. Okay, thank you very much. So we did update our quest line there, uh, and I do believe that for an introduction video or introductionary episode, this will be it. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you guys are going to enjoy this one. Um, like I said, in the next episode, we will make our way to the Asarai lands, collect some troops, um, possibly start messing about with some of the looters on the map and try and make the necessary money for the next step in establishing our clan uh including of course uh making our renown a little bit higher that is also another reason why we're heading to Vostrum. we might you never know we might um bump into an ongoing tournament there in any guys thank you very much for joining me if you like what you see please do consider leaving a like subscribe if you haven't yet leave a comment down below as well as a, possibly a comment with one of your favorite mods that you would like me to try for this game uh and i'm sure that eventually it will be considered at any rate thank you very much for joining me i haven't kaiser i will see you guys next time until then ad gloriam <laughs>